Hello, you're listening to Ovarian Cancer Connect. I'm your host, Dr. John Nakayama. This podcast is sponsored by AstraZeneca. Let's get started. Welcome to episode four of the podcast series, HRD What, HRD Why. In this episode, we'll be talking about suggestions of how to implement a testing flow in your practice. I'm Dr. John Nakayama, and I'm joined today by Dr. Alex Olawai and Dr. Joshua Kesterson. In my situation, things have changed radically with the implementation of new maintenance strategies. I am aggressive about how patients with advanced ovarian cancer set up genetic testing for germline BRCA mutations and HRD tissue testing. At every patient appointment, I have my EMR software set up to remind me to ask whether patients have received genetic counseling or had genetic testing during their appointments. This ensures that patients understand the importance of testing and gives them the opportunity to have the testing done at the earliest possible opportunity. Dr. Olawaya, you practice at a large university health system in Pittsburgh. What's your process for making sure that patients get adequate testing? Thank you, Dr. Nakayama. This is a very important question. Here at the University of Pittsburgh, we have a pathway that actually simplifies the process. In the pathway, both genetic and HRD tissue testing are incorporated. The way it works is when you are going through the process of determining the treatment for the patient or the pathway, there is a specific order that comes up and asks if the patient has been tested. If the answer is no, then you are asked when will the patient be tested. That helps to bring it to your attention and encourages you to do it early. Do you get HRD and genetic testing prompts, or is it just for the genetics? You're prompted to do genetic tests for germline BRCA mutations first. Once you document that the test is negative, it will then prompt you about HRD tissue testing. If the patient is not being treated by me, not going through the pathway and is referred to a medical oncologist, I will give my instructions for testing along with the referral. Sometimes the medical oncologist will tell me that they don't have the resources for testing in their office and ask if we can help the patient and do the testing in Pittsburgh. It's very important to communicate my instructions to the medical oncologist and what I think is the appropriate standard. It's important that we establish a two-way relationship to ensure that the medical oncologist has a process in place so that the patient receives the necessary genetic and HRD tissue testing. Thank you, Dr. Olawai, for sharing your experience to encourage communication regarding genetic and HRD testing with medical oncologists. Dr. Kesterson, you practice in central Pennsylvania. I'd like to ask you to tell us in your area and in your practice what the challenges might be that is different from Dr. Olawai's. Thank you, Dr. Nakayama. That's a great question. For frame of reference, I practice in an area that I wouldn't entirely call rural, but is less densely populated than what you would see in Pittsburgh and the surrounding areas. With that comes a large geographical area from which we receive patients, meaning we have multiple different hospital systems, multiple different providers, and multiple different electronic medical records. The concern is that things get too fragmented, especially when patients are being treated closer to home by a medical oncology colleague who may operate in a different clinic or in a different hospital system. You both have mentioned pathways, and what resonates with me is more of a checklist, if you will. We have a universal checklist for ovarian cancer patients who will get genetic testing, homologous recombination deficiency testing, and whether that's done at our institution or an outside the institution, we make sure that we have those results on file so we can appropriately quarterback that care amongst multiple providers who may be at different institutions and different sites. While it is a little bit more cumbersome than having a universal electronic medical record, the benefit we do have with a universal checklist, including HRD testing, to work with medical oncologists is to avoid anything slipping through the cracks. This allows us to have all the data points that we need in order to ensure the optimal treatment for the patient. One thing we have is the opportunity to see the patient as well as their tissue, where the medical oncologist, for the most part, sees the patient. This may seem a little bit simplistic, but I think it's incredibly impactful in how we treat these patients and it's a way we can use to educate the medical oncologist to test the tissue as well. Thank you, Dr. Kesterson and Dr. Olawai. I think the take-home point from this discussion is that having a genetic and HRD tissue testing process, whatever that process may be, is to make sure the testing is available at the time when it is critical to make treatment decisions. 
whether you're a gynecologic oncologist or a medical oncologist. Thank you for joining us in our discussion of the actual implementation of a testing system. We hope this has proved useful information for you to consider for your practice. But please don't leave and join us for the next episode where we'll discuss talking with your patient about testing.